Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So what I am going to do today is, uh, uh, so the first thing I want to do is to give the proof that there are no global regular functions that are non-constant on a projective variety, okay. In other words on a projective variety the only global regular functions are constants, okay. So um, you know, uh, so let me tell you a couple of things, first thing is that it is, uh, this is, this result should be thought of as uh, an analog uh, of or you know part of a general philosophy of results which say that on compact objects you do not have any uh, the only global nice functions on compact objects are constants okay. So for example you know uh, uh, one such uh, example is for example you know if you take uh, suppose you, you take the Riemann sphere okay namely the ordinary real sphere S2 and make it into a Riemann surface which means what you do is. Uh, to make it into Riemann surface you just have to be able to talk about uh, holomorphic functions at a point or analytic functions at a point and for that you use the stereographic projection to identify the complement of uh, a point with the plane and by taking two different points you can cover the uh, uh, sphere by two uh, planes okay by the stereographic projection and you can check that you can use this to uh, uh, define what is called a Riemann surface structure on the sphere and then you can define what is then, then, then you can look at global holomorphic functions on the Riemann sphere and then uh, it will turn out that the only global holomorphic functions on the Riemann sphere are constant. The, the reason being that the Riemann sphere is compact because it is after all topologically it is compact it is a sphere it is uh, for, for example if you want it is both closed and bounded so it is compact and uh, uh, any global holomorphic function on the Riemann sphere if you uh, restrict it to the complement of a point then you are then you will get a holomorphic function on the plane okay and its image will be bounded because it is the image is compact okay. So you get a holomorphic function an entire function which is bounded and Liouville's theorem will tell you that it is constant. So what will happen is that your, your holomorphic function on the Riemann sphere if you if you throw outside a, if you throw out a point. Uh, in the complement of a point it will be a constant and therefore by continuity it will also be a constant at that point. So it will globally uh, reduce to a constant okay. So this is for example uh, in tune with the general philosophy of results that says that whenever objects are compact then uh, the only global good functions on such objects are constants okay. You cannot expect non-constant good global functions on objects that are compact and the fact is that in algebraic geometry uh, the correct analog of compactness is projectivity. Uh, in fact more generally the correct uh, analog is called completeness okay but I won't uh, uh, be explaining about that probably in this course I, I do not know whether I will do that but you will come to know if you take uh, second further courses in algebraic geometry 
but I want to tell you that you must always think of projective varieties as compact as the correct analog analogs of compact objects okay and the usual compactness does not make sense I mean that does not give you anything uh, special in Zariski topology because you know Zariski topology is already compact I mean that is the reason why we use the word quasi compact in fact compactness in the uh, compactness in the sense that every open cover has a finite sub cover that compactness in algebraic geometry for the Zariski topology is renamed as quasi compactness okay and it just comes free of charge I mean it just comes free okay so there is nothing special if you define compactness to be just uh, you know uh, every open cover uh, admitting a finite sub cover so you do not you do not get anything uh, I mean there is nothing to uh, that is not a condition because it is always true alright that is the reason why the usual definition of compactness is of no use in algebraic geometry and it therefore it is re it is recalled uh, it is redesignated as quasi compactness and therefore you can ask what is the correct analog of compactness the correct analog is being projective okay at least when you study varieties but uh, um, the more perfect answer would be that the correct analog is that you should look at what are called as complete objects okay and projective varieties are examples of complete objects so this is one fact i am going to prove that i mean we are going to show that on a projective variety uh, the only global regular functions are constant then the other thing that we are going to show is uh, the other the other thing that one has to be worried about is uh, uh, the following see if global regular functions are constant then how do you study the object okay there are no global regular functions of the object then how do you study the object now uh, it presents a problem because you see in the case of affine varieties the global regular functions uh, they give you the affine coordinate ring and you know the affine coordinate ring is an invariant okay it describes the, the affine variety completely okay in fact if you give me uh, the affine co from the affine coordinate ring you can get back the affine variety by just taking the maximal spectrum and putting the Zariski topology on it okay therefore the for an affine variety the affine coordinate ring is the same as global regular functions and that completely captures the affine variety but it is not true for projective varieties for projective varieties first of all global regular functions are uh, constants okay so the there are no non constant global regular functions the second thing is if you take the analog of the affine ring you will get the homogeneous coordinate ring co coordinate ring the homogeneous coordinate ring is also uh, not uh, will not characterize your projective variety so uh, in fact the homogeneous coordinate ring will depend on the embedding okay so if you change the uh, embedding into into a projective space if you change the if you take the same projective variety okay and put it in a different uh, uh, projective space then the homogeneous coordinate ring will change it will not be this uh, up same up to isomorphism so you cannot keep track of the projective variety so easily just either using regular functions because there are not any non constant regular functions and you cannot use the homogeneous coordinate ring to track your projective variety okay therefore the only way of studying projective varieties is to study embeddings into projective space okay and uh, this leads to the study of morphisms into projective space the so called uh, uh, classically it was done by studying what are called as uh, uh, div, uh, uh, linear systems and then uh, 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 and things like that and um, in modern language we study line bundles and uh, things like that okay so but these are all things that you will come across probably in a second course in algebraic geometry but the, so what I want to say is that the fact that uh, uh, there are no non, non constant regular functions on a projective variety and the fact that the homogeneous coordinating of a projective variety does not characterize a projective variety leads you to study embeddings of projective varieties into different projective spaces and the embeddings are uh, they need to be studied carefully okay so uh, anyway with that preamble let me start with uh, let me start with uh, the theorem that we want to prove so here is the theorem uh, if y is a projective variety then o of y is equal to k so uh, in other words every global regular function on y is a constant okay where when I write k I mean every element of k is a constant and it defines it is it is thought of as the constant regular function uh, constants are of course regular functions okay so what is the proof so the proof is uh, you know uh, proof is the a few ideas from competitive algebra and module theory but I will explain I will explain that so you know your situation is like this you have you have y 
uh, which is sitting as an irreducible closed subset of some projective space. Of course, we are always as usual working over small k which is an algebraically closed field okay and you know what uh, then you also have so this diagram if you go to homogeneous coordinate rings it translates to a quotient. So, closed subsets always correspond to quotients in algebraic geometry uh, and of course op going to uh, open subsets uh, corresponds to going to a union of localizations if you want okay. So, uh, so this is the polynomial ring in uh, n plus 1 variables you know this is the this is the affine coordinate ring of the affine space uh, which whose for, for which the corresponding punctured affine space uh, sits above this projective space this is the quotient of the punctured affine n plus 1 space okay and that affine n, n plus 1 space has affine coordinate ring equal to this and that affine coordinate ring is defined to be the projective homogeneous coordinate ring of the projective space and then this closed y being a closed subset of that corresponds to a quotient you go modulo the ideal of y uh, so I put a subscript h this is the homogeneous ideal of y namely it is all those homogeneous polynomials which vanish on y okay uh, and uh, then you get s y. So, s y is just s p n mod uh, i y and of course the fact with the uh, uh, the fact with all these things is that everything is graded okay. So, there is a gradation here you know uh, the gradation here just corresponds to uh, uh, every polynomial being broken down into its homogeneous parts okay and uh, 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 so uh, uh, and therefore you also get a gradation here and the gradation here is just gradation uh, when you read it mod i y okay. So, um, well well now what one does is that we have already seen that you know if you take uh, if you take the uh, so so you know you have so we have a uh, we have a picture like this uh, we have the we have o y this is the uh, ring of regular functions on y global regular functions on y and of course k sits inside this as constant as the constant functions okay because every uh, scalar is being thought of as the, as a regular function uh, which is equal to that constant scalar right and then o y goes into k y k y is the is the function field of y okay that is what we discussed and studied in the last lecture and what is this function field of y this is actually we calculated it for a projective variety and we showed that this it is you take s y okay you take homogeneous localization at 0 okay 0 is a prime ideal okay the 0 ideal is a prime ideal because it is an integral domain uh, even here you take the 0 ideal here it is a prime ideal because <coughs> this is an integral domain you have only gone modulo i y and i y mind you is a homogeneous prime ideal okay and the reason why i y is a homogeneous prime ideal is because y is irreducible alright. So, since you have gone modulo prime this is still a domain the 0 ideal is uh, prime ideal. So, you take the homogeneous localization at 0. So, I want you to uh, I want you to distinguish between this and the homogeneous and, and the non homogeneous localization. So, this this s y sub 0 this 0 here I do not put a round bracket around that 0 see this 0 is you invert everything outside 0 <coughs> okay this is actually the quotient field of s y this is the quotient field of s y okay. So, this consists of literally taking quotients of two polynomials in s y of course, by a polynomial in s y I mean every polynomial in s y is some polynomial here red mod i y okay. Of course, here uh, i y is same as i y sub h okay I keep putting this h sometimes to just remind you that it is a homogeneous ideal right it is generated by homogeneous elements. So, this is the quotient field of s y but this is different see this is this is homogeneous localization. So, what you do is you do not here you uh, invert everything that is not 0, but here you invert only those things that are not 0 and which are homogeneous okay. And the reason why you do that is when you do it like that then you know 
this consists of uh, elements of the form numerator by denominator the numerator coming from S y and the denominator being a, a non zero homogeneous element ok and therefore if the numerator is also homogeneous since the denominator is also homogeneous the difference in the degree of homogeneity will give you a degree so this will become graded this will be graded and for this graded you take the degree 0 part that is precisely the uh, function field of ky that is what we proved in the last lecture right. So I am I am I am just asking that telling you I am just recalling that this is uh, ky the function field of, of y is actually this homogeneous degree 0 part of the homogeneous localization at 0 all right which it sits inside this huge field this is a huge field this is the full quotient field of the of s y ok and uh, uh, of course you must remember that this is so you know you see s y is sitting inside uh, 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 of course this is the after all this is the quotient field of this integral domain this sitting inside that and you know what I am going to do I am going to do the following thing I am going to start with an f here I am going to start with the global regular function on y so you know f is f is a global regular function f is, f is from y to a1 it's a morphism a global regular function is uh, a regular uh, a regular function is just a morphism into a1 okay we have seen that before so this f is a global regular function it is defined on all of y and it takes values in a1 it is a morphism into a1 and I am going to show that this f is a constant okay I am going to show f is a constant and how am I going to do that I am going to do the following thing I am going to show that f satisfies uh, I am going to show f satisfies a monic polynomial with coefficients in k okay I am going to show f satisfies a monic polynomial with coefficients in k okay that means if you consider everything uh, as being uh, inside this field this is a field extension of k this is k is a field this is also a bigger field and this is a field extension of k and this is an element there and beautiful thing is that this is algebraic over k if I prove that f satisfies a monic polynomial with coefficients in k I am just saying that f is algebraic over k but k is algebraically closed therefore f has to belong to k and that is how I prove f is equal to some constant okay so this is how I am going to do it and how am I going to get a monic polynomial that f satisfies with coefficients in k what I am going to do is I am going to look at this ring so I am going to look at s y uh, I am going to look at polynomials in f okay which is also sitting inside this I am going to look at this ring this is the polynomial I am writing polynomials in f with s y coefficients okay I am going to I am going to study this ring okay so this is the uh, this is the broad idea of the proof all right so now let us get to the details so uh, so the first thing I want to say is well you see why is uh, 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 you know you know the you know y is contain y is of course inside p n and you know p n is uh, the union of all these u i s i equal to 0 to n these where each u i uh, uh, you know inside p n uh, this corresponds to uh, the coordinate x i not vanishing ok so this is the this is affine piece this is isomorphic to a n so in fact you know that there is this there is this isomorphism phi i of this with a n you have this and uh, then I have y intersection u i inside this so well this is open this is open this is closed this is closed this diagram commutes well this is irreducible well this is also irreducible of course and, and here also this is also irreducible that is also irreducible ok so this is your diagram and the whole point is that uh, uh, you know we know what we know what uh, uh, see you know you we know you, see this isomorphism is how uh, we showed that u i is actually affine we proved that u i is actually isomorphic to affine space therefore u i is affine and this is an irreducible closed subset of u i therefore this is also an affine variety okay and therefore you we have 
that O of y intersection u i uh, is just the same as A of y intersection u i because uh, y intersection u i is affine and what is this 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 guy this is just we have we know what it is it is just s y uh, well you you localize at x i uh, and then take the degree 0 part this is what it is okay. So, this is uh, uh, this is affine coordinate ring of y y okay. So, you take s y you localize at x i okay when you because you are localize, localize at x i means you invert powers of x i okay and x i is of course homogeneous of degree 1 therefore when you invert powers of x i there is a natural there is a natural gradation on this and then I am saying take degree 0 part which means that you are just looking at some homogeneous polynomial in s y okay uh, mod x i to the power of degree of that polynomial that is all that is what you are looking at that is what this uh, thing is okay. So, uh, so now what you should realize is that you see uh, thus uh, f if you see if you take f and restrict it to y intersection u i this will belong to O of y intersection u i because you know you take a regular function and restrict it to an open set you will get a regular function alright. But O of y intersection u i is this so this implies is uh, of the form uh, well it is a it is an element here so it will be it will look like g i divided by x i to the power of uh, uh, n i where n i is equal to degree g i uh, g i belonging to uh, s y sub n i the this is the homogeneous part uh, of degree n i in s y okay. Mind you see I wanted to let me again recall see this this is a homogeneous uh, this this is a graded ring. So, this is a direct sum of j greater than or equal to 0 s t n k j where s j consists of homogeneous polynomials of degree j and s 0 is going to be k homogeneous polynomials of degree 0 alright and you, this is just uh, this is just the ex, this is just the standard fact that any polynomial can be broken down into its homogeneous components and those homogeneous components are unique and each homogeneous component has a homogeneous degree okay. So, you know the polynomial has first degree 0 homogeneous component which is the constant term then it is a degree 1 homogeneous component which is the linear term then you have degree 2 homogeneous component which is the quadratic term and then the cubic term and so on and that is this decode this decomposition all right and this decomposition also gives you a decomposition here okay you are also going to get a decomposition of uh, of uh, uh, of this ring okay the only thing is that you read uh, you read everything modulo this ideal it is a homogeneous ideal that is the whole point. So, in particular you know if you take a polynomial here if you take a polynomial in i y okay that will go to 0 here. So, if you take a polynomial in i y which is homogeneous of some positive degree it will suppose it has degree j it will be in s j, but if you go to the quotient it will become degree 0 because you have read it you are you have to read your whatever you get you have to read it mod i y okay. So, you have this induced gradation here all right and uh, so I think I think by notation I should have I should use not s so I should use s sub n i okay. So, every element here uh, every element here is going to look see without this 0 it is going to look like some element of s y modulo some <laughs> power of x i and of course this g i is actually be g i is actually being read mod i i y mind you okay I am actually if you want actually I should put g i bar but I won't do it okay g i is just the image of a g i here and uh, I have to read it mod i y all right. So, it is going to look like this and the point is since I am taking degree 0 part the g i is homogeneous of degree n i and the pub the denominator is also 
may written so that you know the power of xi becomes ni so that the denominator is also homogeneous of degree ni so the induced degree is going to be 0 that is how it is adjusted alright. Now this is how f restricted u y intersection u i looks like alright uh, in fact you know if you if I am I am I am just trying to say think of g i as a think of g i as a, uh, as a degree uh, n i homogeneous polynomial okay then if you take this quotient I have a degree n i homogeneous polynomial divided by another degree n i homogeneous polynomial it is a quotient of two homogeneous polynomials. So this is certainly a regular function and and this regular function will uh, uh, will 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 live on on u i in fact okay this is a regular function that will live on u i because I have I, have, I, I should not say the whole projective space it will live on u i alright. So I want to make the following statement you see O you see this O y so f is in O y but you know so let me try do something here so you know this is contained in O of y intersection u i okay uh, because you know the uh, this is something that we have already seen if you have regular functions on uh, on an open set uh, then you can restrict them to a further smaller open set okay and the restriction map from a regular function on a larger open set to a regular function on a smaller open set is an injective map because uh, the injectivity is because if two regular functions coincide on some open set they coincide everywhere okay therefore this is contained inside this and you know I started with an f here okay and uh, what is the image of this f this the image of f under this inclusion is f is, is precisely f restricted to y intersection u i okay. So I need some more space here so let me write it correctly okay. So f goes to f restricted to y intersection u i but the point I want I am going to do something now what I am going to say is I am going to say I am going to identify these as these two together I am going to identify these two thinking that everything is be happening here so this is my big field where everything is happening all things are happening here okay so everything is happening in this big field which is the quotient field of sy okay so there is no difference between this and this after all because this is this element f of f restricted to y intersection ui is just coming from this f okay which is a subset of this and when when I consider everything here mind you this is my universe this is the big field where everything lives so you know I am going to identify this with this it is correct alright now what I want you to understand is you know if 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 f restricted to this is this then xi power ni multiplied by f will can be identified with gi which is here okay so I am going to write this xi power ni okay times f belongs to s ni y okay this is true for every i right and in fact you know what I actually what I should write is if you want x i to the n i f restricted to y intersection u i okay that is what I should write but I am identifying f with f restricted to y intersection u i because everything is sitting inside this huge field and this element goes to that okay all right now so you know uh, but what you should understand is that you know uh, 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 you see if I instead of ui if I take uj okay then I will get o of y intersection uj alright and well uh, the, the f will also go to f restricted to y intersection uj but then the fact is both of them this f restricted to y intersection ui and f restricted to y intersection uj will define they will correspond to the same element here that is something that you should not forget okay. So even as the i changes these things change but they all come from the same f so they all all if as i changes the various f restricted y intersection ui are all one and the same element here I am calling them just as f okay. So this is a small thing that you have to set theoretic thing that subtlety you have to notice okay. Now okay so I have this now I am going to I am going to play with this and I am going to say the following thing I am going to say that you see you know basically the idea is f is a regular function see a regular function on a projective variety or a quasi projective variety is just a quotient of two homogeneous polynomials of the same degree. So essentially it is degree 0 you see 
you must understand that it is degree 0 if you think of it as uh, locally as a quotient of 2 homogeneous polynomials of the same degree which is what it is it is a degree 0 object and this is this so you know this is correct to expect you take a degree 0 thing you multiply it with degree n i the resulting thing is of degree n i it lands in the piece with with which is which consists of homogeneous elements of degree n i. So, this statement is correct all right I mean it is believable. Now what I want to do is put n uh, uh, is equal to sigma n i take the sum of all those n i's ok. Consider take any m greater than n greater than or equal to n ok take any monomial in x naught dot 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 x naught and so on up to xn of degree of degree m ok. So, this monomial will look like x naught power uhhh uh, m1 into x naught power m2 and so on x naught power m n with sum of all the m i's equal to m. This is how a monomial in all the x i's of degree m will look like all right uh, oops is, is something wrong ok I am I am oops this should be 1 this should be n maybe this should be 0 my numbering is bad ok right all right. So, this is how a monomial of degree m looks like and the point is I am you multiply a monomial of degree m with m greater than n with f and you will again land inside a degree m piece because of this observation. Now you see x naught to the power of m naught x n to the power of m n times f if I calculate ok. See this is you must understand that there since m is greater than or equal to n which is sigma n i ok see there exists j such that uhhh you know m j is greater than or equal to the corresponding n j this has to happen because if every m j small m j is less than strictly less than capital n j then the sum of all the small m j's which is m has to be strictly less than the sum of all the n's n i's n j's which is n whereas I have assumed m is greater than or equal to n. So, this is a it is an obvious thing that has to happen. So, then you know I can write this as x naught power m naught uh, blah 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 then you know when x j comes I will put m j minus n j then I will write x j plus 1 blah 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 uh, power m j plus 1 and go on up to x n m n I will take out this x j power n j times f and I know this x j power n j times f is in s sub n j y this is in s sub n j ok. So, this is a degree n j homogeneous uh, object ok it is a degree n j homogeneous polynomial and what is left out is a homogeneous polynomial of degree m minus n j. So, the moral of the story is that this whole thing is going to lie in s m y ok this is what happens because this fellow lies in this belongs to s n j y that is because of this ob observation ok. So, this part is homogeneous of degree n j the remaining part is a monomial of which is homogeneous of degree m minus n j ok. Therefore, when you multiply it you will get the total degree will be m minus n j plus n j. So, you will land in m ok. Now, this happens for every monomial of degree m ok, but all these monomials of degree m what do they span? They span precisely S m ok after all S m is the space of all homogeneous polynomials of degree m of course, red mod i y red mod i y because you are in S y you are not in S of p n ok you are in S of i y. Therefore, the moral of the story is that since such monomials span S M 
uh, y we have uh, s m y dot f goes into s m y ok you have this you take an element of s m y multiply by f you end up inside s m y ok because any element of s m y is just a linear combination of uh, k linear combination of such one finite linear combination of such monomials and each monomial is going to push f into uh, into s m y all right so you are going to get this and now from this uh, what you can get is that s m y of f squared will go into s m y of f uh, uh, dot f which will go into s m y dot f which will go into s m y and if you continue by induction you will get s m y will take f power r into s m y ok. So, multiplication on the right by powers of f post non negative powers of f is going to push s m y into itself ok. So, so you have this so you know so in particular you know in particular what I want you to notice is that you know if you take x naught power uh, so I so I want to so here is so here is a, here is a uh, here is the observation that is very important for us the the observation is that s y f ok uh, I want to say s y f uh, is contained in x naught to the power of minus n uh, times s y. So, here is the important observation I mean it is a it is a that is a result of this actually ok see see and and why is all this happening this is all mind you all this is happening in the quotient field of s y the big the big huge field where everything is contained it is happening there see x naught to the minus n makes sense there in the quotient field of s y ok. So, everything is working there everything is living there right why is this true that is this is because you see you take you take any uh, you take any homogeneous piece here I mean you take any element here and multiply by f and if you further multiply by x naught power n the result is going to go into s y ok. See any element here is going to see any element here is going to look like uh, sigma uh, h i f power i i equal to 0 to some l this is how something is going to look like and you see this this uh, each h i is in s y ok. But now if I take if I multiply outside by x naught power n ok if I multiply outside by x naught power n then this thing if this x naught power n into h i will push each homogeneous component of h i into a degree greater than or equal to n ok. See each h i is in s y alright each h i is in s y so each h i breaks down into homogeneous components and it components will it could, could it could have components from degree 0 onwards up to some uh, value finite value. But multiplying by x naught power n hikes all these degrees homogeneous degrees of these homogeneous components to make even uh, the minimum to be greater than or equal to n ok. Therefore, when I multiply by x naught this goes into s y because of this observation whenever you take any homogeneous uh, degree greater than or equal to small n degree greater than or equal to small n I mean degree greater than or equal to capital N uh, polynomial and you multiply by any power of f you again get uh, degree greater than or equal to uh, I mean you again get a homogeneous polynomial mod i y. So, this goes into this therefore, this is in x naught power minus n that.
in it Im implies that any polynomial in the f f with coefficients in uh, s y this belongs to x naught to the minus n s y okay. So that is how you get this in here okay now now the nice thing is uh, so so the moral of the story is you see this fellow here this fellow here is actually contained so what I have got is that this fellow is actually contained in x naught to the minus n s y which is of course also contained here okay. So this see this uh, object this polynomial ring in f f with coefficients in s y this is caught inside this and 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 we are more or less done you know why the fact is because you see this fellow here this is as a mo now think of everything as an s y module this is a finite this is a s y module generated by the single element x naught to the minus n x naught to the minus n s y is the s y module is the s y sub module of the quotient field of s y generated by x naught to the minus n okay. So it is a it is a module which is generated by a single element so it is a finitely generated module okay and s y is what s y is an Eutherian ring this is a finitely generated module over an Eutherian ring and this is a sub module of that therefore this is also finitely generated okay. So you see s y uh, since it is is generated by one element it is finitely generated uh, over s as s y module. and since s y is noetherian so this is uh, where we are using uh, the fact that the polynomial ring is noetherian see the polynomial ring is noetherian and s y is just a quotient of a noetherian ring a quotient of a noetherian ring is also noetherian therefore s y is a noetherian ring and you have a finitely generated uh, any finitely generated module over noetherian ring is also noetherian and every sub module of a finitely generated module over an Eutherian ring is also an Eutherian is also finitely generated okay. So uh, the final conclusion is that s y of f is finitely generated as a module over s y this is what I want okay. Now you know now we uh, we go into a little bit of commutative algebra you see the fact that syf is finitely generated as a module over sy is equivalent to saying that f is integral over sy okay that is that f satisfies a monic polynomial with coefficients in sy okay by by the commutative algebra of integral extensions syf syf is an integral extension of sy f is actually integral over sy okay and f is integral over sy so this is some commutative algebra which you can uh, i mean you can easily look up in a book in in a book on commutative algebra for example standard references Atiyah and McDonald's introduction to commutative algebra you look at the chapter on uh, integral extensions and you will find this and it is very easy to prove it is a it is it is just an argument that involves some determinants okay. So by the commutative algebra of integral extensions f is integral over s y that is uh, f satisfies a monic polynomial.
with Sy coefficients. So, you know you will get something like this you will get f power t plus a t minus 1 f to the t minus 1 plus blah 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 plus g not equal to 0 okay where where the a where the a i are actually in S y and this is all happening in the quotient field of S y mind you this is all happening in this quotient field of X, a, 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 S y is a huge uh, extension field of k it is a huge extension field of k in fact you know uh, this itself is a huge extension of k because you know actually uh, this is the quotient field of y its transcendence degree over k is actually equal to the dimension of the variety y. So, if y see y is inside p n ok, so y can have at most dimension n if it has dimension n it is the whole it is all of p n otherwise it will have lesser dimension, but suppose y has dimension r then this quotient the transcend it means that the tra this this field extension the transcend the, the quotient field of or the function field of y its uh, transcendence degree over k is equal to dimension of y. So, this is a huge field extension ok this contains lot of transcendental elements. So, this itself is a huge field extension it is a transcendental extension and this is a much more huger one ok. So, a, everything is happening in that huge field ok. Uh, now, you see now each of these a sub i's they are in S y. So, they have homogeneous components and what I want to say is that you can you can write out you can replace each of these with the degree 0 homogeneous component ok and uh, so what you do is now multiply this whole thing throughout by x naught to the n right. So, you will get x naught to the n f plus x naught to the uh, I mean a n minus 1 a t uh, f to the t e plus a t minus 1 x naught to the power of n f t minus 1 plus dot 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 uh, x naught to the power of n times uh, uh, a naught is 0. Now, this is this certainly makes sense inside uh, so this makes sense inside S y ok that is because you know x naught multiplying f by uh, any uh, homogeneous polynomial of degree uh, greater than or equal to capital N pushes it into S y that is the let us see that is the whole point here. You multiply any power of f by any homogeneous polynomial or uh, even any polynomial with every with the condition that every homogeneous component has degree greater than capital N then the result will land inside S y. So, this happens in S y ok. Now, once this happens in S y S y has a gradation if something is 0 then every graded piece is 0. So, if you take the degree 0 part so you know you take the degree x naught power n part of this which is the lowest degree. If you take the degree x naught power n part then what I will get is I will get this I will get x naught power n f t plus a t minus 1 and you know I am going to put 0 here to tell you that a t minus 1 0 is the degree 0 part of a t minus 1. See a each a t minus 1 is in S y and since S y has a gradation a t minus 1 breaks down into various parts of homogeneous parts of various homogeneous degrees and I am taking the degree 0 part. Then I will get x naught to the n f to the t minus 1 plus and so on and then finally, the last time I will get is x naught to the power of n a 0 upper 0 this a 0 upper 0 is the degree 0 part of a 0 I will get this is also equal to 0 ok. And where uh, and so th and this will happen in S n y this will happen in the degree 0 piece uh, in the degree n piece ok. This is because mind you uh, whenever you have a graded ring uh, an element uh, in that ring is 0 if and only if every homogeneous piece is 0. So, this element on the left side is an element of S y which is a graded ring the fact that it is equal to 0 means that each of its homogeneous pieces is of degree 0 and what is the minimum uh, degree homogeneous piece the minimum degree homogeneous piece is capital N ok. So, I am taking the, the uh, degree uh, I, I should not say degree x naught to the power of n I should say degree n I am taking the degree n part ok 
the lowest degree part. So, I end up with this all right now what I will do is I will in I will cancel this x naught to the n and when I cancel into x naught to the n I have to go out of this, but I will still lie I will still be in the quotient field of s y. So, so this implies that you know f t plus a 0 t minus 1 f to the t minus 1 plus blah 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 plus a 0 0 is equal to 0 in the quotient field of s y. So, this makes sense because I am just multiplying by I am simply multiplying by x naught power minus n which 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 uh, throws me out of s y, but certainly keeps me inside this quotient field of s y because x naught x naught to the minus n lives there all right. But after all what are these guys what are what are all these a t minus 1 0 what are all those things they are all scalars they are all constants they are degree 0 polynomials see they are degree 0 uh, 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 a j 0 belong to s 0 y this is a degree 0 polynomials uh, red mod i y and this is just k this is just k and so this implies that f is algebraic over k but but k is algebraically closed so f belongs to k so this implies o of y it goes into k which means that o of y is equal to k and that's the end of the proof okay so finally i ended up showing that every fellow here is actually here i end up showing that every regular function small f in o y is actually in here so that means that this is actually equal to this okay so the only thing that you will have to look up in commutative algebra is that is this integrality which is i which i think is very easy to understand it's a small exercise uh, you can look it up very clearly in atia mcdonald's book introduction to commutative algebra okay but anyway uh, the moral of the story is that there are no non constant regular functions on a projective variety okay so i'll stop here